Hey guys, welcome to episode six of the Orthodox Squad. We've taken a bit of a hiatus, but now we're all back together and we've got Sofrani from Harmony on our channel today. If you've checked out his content, he likes to make art and I'm just going to get him to introduce himself. Sofrani, how's it going? And thanks for joining us today. Not doing well. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. I have been enjoying the Orthodox Meme Squad for a couple of years now, so it's awesome to be here. Um, well, uh, I, I was looking through YouTube the other day and I saw his content and I really liked what he does. So what I, I think the first question I want to start with is what made you make start making that content or get into that? You know, the art. how did you start? Yeah. Yeah, I done. Um, my background is in like branding and kind of a lot of video work, graphic design. And then I did YouTube for probably like 10 years before that, mainly focused on like technology videos and kind of like, you know, virtual reality gaming content. And yeah. then since leaving that channel, I kind of took a took a gap and really wanted to express the gifts that I think I've been able to kind of um, slowly grow over over time and uh, simultaneously leaving that past content behind, not really doing a lot of technology stuff anymore. Simultaneously leaving that and joining the church, it was just kind of like, well, hey, this is like this, the richest tradition on the face of the planet with the greatest stories and, and the greatest saints. So it just felt like a perfect merging to be able to tell those stories in a way using this new technology, uh, such as like these animation programs and video editing and kind of this content sphere and really just be able to channel that creative energy into um, upholding the, the stories of the saints. So that's kind of the, that was the main impetus, I'd say. Hmm. Well, um, I think the other thing that I would say that builds from that is what got you to come into the church? What was the turning point for you? I had, I was raised evangelical or kind of like non-denominational. Um, and I would say in my latter teens really fell away from it and was, you know, kind of dabbled in atheism and then eventually really started to kind of see like material reality isn't like the only explanation uh, for everything. And, and so unfortunately I went, you know, into, I'd say like the new age sphere, um, a lot yeah. of like yoga and, and meditation and just kind of dabbled in that for a couple of years and really hit rock bottom with that. Um, and so by the grace of God, he, he, he was actually reading revelation. <laughs> kind of seeing like the world around me crumbling, uh, mostly around 2019, 2020. Um, and so through there, it was like a slow re-entrance into figuring out like, you know, <laughs> All right. Am I back? Christianity sphere. Um, so for me, let's just uh, go back for a sec. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. You did cut out for a second there. You were saying that you reached rock bottom, last thing we heard, in the new age sphere. And then from there, you cut off. So if you could cool. go from there. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no worries. I think it's my internet here. We have like a snowstorm here. I just picked up. But uh, yeah, no, just kind of reached rock bottom with, with the new age sphere and... and it was around 2020, just kind of seeing the world around me crumbling that I kind of started to like search into the Bible, just kind of did like, you know, the opening the Bible, seeing like what this is um, from a more of like adult perspective rather than like my teenage years. And then my thought back then was kind of like, well, maybe Christ was just like a, a good role model, kind of like, like a Buddha or, or, or something. But then, you know, really coming to terms with like, no, Christ is God. How do I know him? How do I approach him? And slowly kind of re-entering Christianity and mainly through like the Western 
Christian sphere, just kind of tried to like do it on myself, kind of like, you know, the home church, um, listening to a lot of, you know, like YouTube pastors and whatnot, but still kind of feeling unfulfilled a little bit. And a good friend of mine, I had actually met him in Minecraft, probably like 15, 10 or 15 years ago. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, he was interested in orthodoxy as well, because he also grew up uh, evangelical or non-denominational. And I was kind of like, well, you know, what is this orthodox thing? And also diving into Jonathan Peugeot and just kind of really seeing the the links and like the ultimate fulfillment where... Christianity is fully explained, but then also having the ability to read about the mystical side of it. So basically what I was searching for in like the new age sphere, but, but seeing the fullness of it and seeing the actual truth of it. And, uh, so yeah, thank God just through there, uh, slowly, slowly kind of, you know, research more into orthodoxy and then eventually moving up to Alaska, um, just by the grace of God, <laughs> happened to find the the one town here um, that I was looking for had a really great Orthodox church that I've been attending for a couple of years now. So that was kind um, of the main well, path. I, well, I'm glory to God. I'm glad that that you went on that path and that I'm talking to you here. Um, but with your content, I think the main thing that I want to point out is how hard it is to build a presence online. And you mentioned that you've got a background in in was it marketing? Or, mm -hmm. yeah, so how did you kind of leverage that to build a fan base? I think you have like 40K subscribers, which is no small feat for an Orthodox channel. If you guys are watching, that's that's big. So how did you kind of get yourself out there and get people to see what you were making and what you were doing? Yeah, I'd say the creating the previous content that I did, it was a channel called Disrupt and it was a lot of like technology gaming stuff. And so that I think really gave me a grasp on like what the YouTube sphere is, like what type of content and like how to do the thumbnails and stuff. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at it by any stretch, um, but it definitely gave me a certain perspective on like what is the, let's say secular side of YouTube, like just the straight gaming content and then how to take some of the good from that like basically just how to market a video how to package it um and then try i basically tried to and and am still trying to apply that into um the stories of the saints and this rich history been uh, given well, I, the, now we're going to go into kind of a topic that I've thought about based on what we've been talking about. It's technology and orthodoxy and how you're leveraging that because there's a niche sphere that's completely opposed to technology. And I think that's not, a, it's not a Christian thing. It's, it's everyone. They're opposed to change. What made you go down this path of like, now I'm going to, I'm going to turn that around. I don't think technology is inherently bad and I can use it in a good way to spread the faith. It doesn't have to be this um, thing that's going to destroy tradition or destroy what we believe as Orthodox Christians, but rather it's something that we can use as a tool to make ourselves better and to evangelize better with, I think the technology has let us evangelize to people way better than we could have a hundred years ago where in countries where traditionally they're not so orthodox and they would not have found out about us without technology so my guess my question to you i guess is where do you see technology fitting in in the orthodox sphere what's its downsides and what's its benefits give me a um list of three for each or uh you know, however many, however many you, you can, that you can actually think of, because I know if I say a list of three, it'll put you on the spot. So let's, let's not do that. But benefits and, <laughs> and disadvantages, I guess, is the best way to put it. Don't yeah, you dare give less than three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm counting. I'm counting. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in school. I got to without my notes. Well, I, I, was highly encouraged by um, just through listening to one of my favorite podcasts, The Royal Path, uh, Father Turbo. He gave his reason for starting that project uh, towards the beginning. And it was something he read from, 
I think it was the Serbian bishop or one of the the hierarchs in that church basically equated the social media is the new rooftop for the Orthodox. And so that kind of gave me some permission where it's like, okay, there is like a chance, there's a way to utilize um, the tool set of technology to uplift and, and to try to tell. So I think that's one of the benefits is like, Yeah, it's, it's really the the reach, and then the the cost difference. Because I think to like twenty years ago, the idea of creating, let's say, an animated film or even like a documentary film, was like exponentially higher than it is now. But with Probably. the advances and like these programs, and even like the connectivity um, that we can have through collaboration being able to work with like an artist across the country or across the world, I think really opens it up and democratizes the creative process uh, for better and worse. I mean, uh, you can create terrible content that doesn't glorify God, or you can create content that does glorify God. Um, so I think it's, it's really just like the accessibility of these creative tools. Um, that's pretty beneficial for, for artists that are in the Orthodox sphere. Well, downsides. That, I, oh yeah. I, I just want to interject a bit. Something that I notice is that because I come from a background in the performing arts, and something that I notice is that when people start making religious content, they often there's a cringe factor. I guess that's the best way to put it. That it's like it's because they put religion that they think that that makes their content good. But if your content's not good, people won't watch it. It doesn't matter if they belong to your denomination or they believe the same things as you. Um, what how I think before you go into the disadvantages, I want to pinpoint on that. How do you avoid that cringe, that cringe factor of of like this content has to be good quality? It doesn't mean just because it's religious that that and this person believes what I believe, they're gonna have to consume it. If that makes sense. And I guess without it coming off as like um like pharisaical like being like a pharisee like look how great i guess yes. so because a lot of like you know uh religious content sometimes just comes off that way and it's and it's i notice it's hard sometimes for people to pull off um putting out genuine content you know coming from like the heart without it you know just you know like Carl said it's coming off as cringy. Yeah, yeah exactly. So um, yeah, I think I. I don't know if oh, you've sorry. noticed that. I don't know if you've noticed that before, but if you have, how do you avoid it? Mm. Yeah, I'm. I think that's something I'm still like. I'm always trying to be aware of that. I'm not. I don't feel it's my place, and I don't feel particularly called to like preach at people i don't think that's really in the ethos of, of orthodoxy right so for me it's more just like if there is anything in the videos that are expanding upon the orthodox faith um i remember before i started creating i was kind of talking to my priest like is this okay to do because i'm like <laughs> at the time i was actually a catechumen um when i posted the first video i was baptized but being a catechumen, I was like, I, you know, I'm not really sure if I should be creating Orthodox content, but he really gave a good advice where it's like, if you're trying to say something new or trying to really teach, it should probably just be the words of like the teachers, like the, the saints, because we have such a rich history. So that's my approach is like, I'm just straight reading what like St. John Christosom has written or what, um, Father Seraphim Rose has written. Um, when I'm telling a story, that's usually more like typed by me or typed by a writer. And so those are a little less like, I think they, they are less prone to being perceived as a uh, Ferris, like mm. a Pharisee, because you're basically just telling a story of someone. And I think, mm. uh, you know, inherently we, we love stories as, as people. So 
Um, that's kind of how I, I try to stay away from it. It's just like, to me, the writings of the saints, I've never come across a cringy writing of the saint. So I kind of have <laughs> that advantage. And then the, uh, the stories of the saints are just, um, I think inherently uh, impactful without being cringy, I would hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, um, that's, that's something I do a lot as well. Like if I'm, um, you know, if I have an inquirer or catechumen coming to me and asking me questions either in person or online, I usually am falling back onto like previous writings uh, or teachings of the church fathers, stories from like priests that I've, I've been told, and then I'm just like repeating them um, or like uh, telling them about an interesting story I read you know, uh, from like, you know, say everyday saints that that's a really good book. And I'll like repeat a lot of the stories from it. And, um, I notice people gain a lot more from that, like, you know, hearing, um, hearing that. Cause then it's not like, you're not really saying it from a place of pride. You're rather it's coming from like, you know, I don't know much. They do though. <laughs> like, you know, the yeah. priests, the saints, they know what's up. And, um, you know, so it, it, I, I, yeah, it helps a lot. Yeah. Like yeah. Spreading the word of God that way, rather than trying to just be like, well, I think, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, that's think... a good interjection, I guess, um, into what's the disadvantages of, of the faith being online is lots of opinions, obviously. And that's why I'm going to give it to you, Sophrony, that the mic is yours. What would you say is a disadvantage when you're using technology? Yeah, sorry, one second. I need to fix my camera. No <laughs> like it's not working for some reason. I'm using like one of those. Well, I can see uh, the camera the top. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can. No worries. Okay. There you go. We got a new, we go. got a new a new watermark. So hopefully that's, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The disadvantages. I would say I think there for me, I'm always to be cognizant of being too irreverent. Um, and I'm still trying to discern that. And thankfully my priest is like, he's pretty like with the times, you know, he's like, mm -hmm. uh, kind of of like the, the former generation, but very well versed in the online sphere. So he's a, he's a really good one to sometimes we'll send him a video and like, you know, is this, is this right? Or, is there anything here? So, um, I think that can be a disadvantage is like not, not having the correct, or at least I personally try to always be cognizant of having the correct respect for the teachings and not just kind of like throw it out there nonchalantly, but at least mm -hmm. try to create something that is high quality that, um, hopefully uplifts it in the correct way. Yeah. Um, it's good that you said that, and I'm just a bit sad that Demos didn't join the chat today. Otherwise, for those of you watching, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up was I saw that you you say that it's a team, and uh, in the description, is it still the case that you guys work in a group, or it's just you at this point in time? Yeah, yeah. So we have um about six or seven in total. Um, but everyone just kind of works like remotely. Um, I'm kind mm -hmm. of like stationed here at Alaska and then I'll, um, you know, send some footage to, to guys across the world and, and they'll, uh, they'll, they'll edit it together, uh, like a writer. So basically trying to utilize most of the team is like, I know personally, 
Um, but then occasionally I'll just like utilize, you know, like contract work on uh, this website called Upwork or Fiverr. So um, if it was just me, I, I would not be able to to do it. So really good support team and great, really been blessed to work with with great artists. Do you find that there's ever situations where someone might agree with something someone won't? And how would you resolve something like that? Because when we're on the team, sometimes that happens. And how we work through it is we kind of like, we look at what's for the greater good rather than what's the opinion. Um, sometimes it, it um, you know, it's a bit of banter, but in the end, we always come to similar conclusion. So how do you guys kind of um, get through situations where you might not exactly agree on whatever you're trying to present? Yeah, I can't think. I think. Or do you never argue? Like, or do you never argue? <laughs> we actually haven't argued yet. I mean. Okay. Yeah. So you're called I harmony. I guess you're called harmony. So that that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, I don't want to jinx it. It works but... out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it stays like that. But yeah. Um. The the something that I wanted to bring about was. With regards to technology, advances in technology are making, like you said before, this kind of content way easier to produce. Do you think, though, that there's a point at which, because sometimes when, okay, when sometimes when you're making something and an AI does enough of it, it begins to lose a human touch. That's how I feel about it. When you're um, in the performing arts, that's very common. If it's, it's a music or it's a video, it's it's whatever. It doesn't feel like there's a connection. Do you think that this kind of technology, how would you employ it when you're making your content? Do you use AI at all? And uh, do you think that it takes away that humanness from whatever you're trying to present? Yeah, I used it early on, uh, referring to like generative visual AI. Mm. Um, and I, a friend, actually reached out and he now um he worked on the death to the world video and he kind of like called me out he's like you know i don't i don't think it looks right man and mm -hmm. i really took that to heart where you know it's kind of like why am i doing it and it was to cut cost and that was kind of the main thing it's just like well it's cheaper it's quicker and so personally, like I've, I've kind of arrived at a place where I don't use it for generating videos or visuals or writing just because I like working with artists at the end of the day. Like I'm, that's one of, I think one of the greatest things is like being able to send a project and get that back and forth with like a actual human artist and see where their ideas come from and, and, uh, figure out, you know, actually how to collaborate. I think that's a, a great joy for me. So I'm finding a lot of fun with that. It's definitely a little bit at times more inconvenient and it takes a little longer, but I think in the long run, it's, it's more, um, more fulfilling creatively. I do use 11 labs for like voices and I eventually yeah. want to get it. We use yeah, that event. too sometimes. It's good. It's good yeah. Yeah. That one to me is a little less like i feel like the parameters aren't as just like wild west um because you're basically just like typing something and getting an output or speaking and getting an output um so that one is a little bit for me less it feels less prone to losing that human touch on the creative process but even that like eventually i would love to be able to work with more like professional voice actors for a lot of the series that we do. Um, so yeah. Yeah, There's my also, husband. Also, oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry, um, no, my no, husband you're... actually is um, uh, into voice acting. He actually learned professionally from uh, some orthodox voice actors and actors alike. And um, yeah, so and he's been actually interested in possibly voicing or like. Um, audiobooks and other projects uh for people especially like for orthodox publications and uh yeah it's it's really it's really good to get more orthodox you know um voice actors out there you know yeah 
I think I that's feel like, like with eleven labs though, and with this kind of meme culture. I mean, the main channel is called Orthodox Meme Squad. So yeah, <laughs> with this kind of meme culture, what what's happening basically is there's not really any space for like it just it's quick. People's attention spans are really short, and they don't like. Finding someone, getting them through the voice acting, paying them for it, or getting them to finding time to fit in is just not convenient. Getting a computer to just say whatever you wanted to say in, you know, two minutes, five minutes is much more cost effective, much more time efficient. And I agree with you, Mary, that I think orthodox voice acting or just voice acting in general, this genuine connection is important. But when you mm -hmm. have people going to liturgies like on the internet, or live streaming it, I feel like this issue is um, not something that I see being resolved or or having space for anytime soon. Mm. And yeah, finding someone that can talk uh, in such a way that you've screened them, they're a voice actor, would be a very long process. I can see why someone would decide not to do that and just say, hey, I'm going to go to 11 Labs, I'm going to pay $10, that's it, save myself some time. How much more would you say, Sophrony, with the creative process? Does it does it um did it take you when you went and remade that Death to the World video? Because I know you said you used AI a lot at first, and your friends like, hey, let's kind of fix this up. How much more time did you expend to do it more authentically? The I really I used generative AI mainly for the um a video we did on St. Yaakov, a few images in that, and then like an early video we did on Patreon. So I thankfully I didn't have to like, I didn't feel like I had to redo those. It was more just like, okay, moving forward, this is what I think is the best route. So I didn't, and, and at that time as well, it wasn't really incorporated into my workflow. So I feel like I, um, I feel like that was a, a little bit of an advantage where I had an established workflow that I've been doing for years before. Um, so I didn't really have to like learn a new how to replace it with AI. But I think there is something like uh, my friends will sometimes relate this idea of like finding the joy in the the toil of it. It's like, sure, I could plug this AI into my workflow and remove like an hour of work. But then am I really like mastering that work? Like there's something to me that's mm -hmm. kind of, there's like a yearning where it's like, okay, even if it's a mundane task, like cutting out a character in Photoshop, it's like, yeah, but that's like, there's a joy in that because I just turn on a podcast and like cut it out and maybe it takes a little mm -hmm. longer, but um I don't think necessarily that making something easier equates to being beneficial for my soul and being beneficial for my development. Um, at the same time, I think there is also a use case, kind of going back to what you said about like the 11 lags example. I think there's certain content, like I see a lot of channels that are like from Greece where they have these translations and they're able to put out a bunch of content for like not a lot of money just because they just are able to translate it, plug it into 11 labs and release. So I think that's like a, a plus. Um, but then I think there's also on the other side, there's something that can be beneficial for like a certain production where it's like, okay, this could take a little longer to have to screen a voice actor, but I think there's also a joy in that and a lot of missed missed um creative like the the little the little like unknown things that happen in the collaborative and creative process are are missed um in some cases so almost like a spark <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah so something that I wanted to ask was with Lent and this technology stuff, do you do fasting from technology? Because I know it helps for me at least to take a break from social media. But if you've got a channel that's mainly revolving around that, 
do you do that or not really like take breaks from yeah i haven't this year i think definitely in the future i should yeah but how are it's you easy. finding the length otherwise oh, well sorry i cut out uh, oh, sorry, how, are you cut out. The, how are you finding the length otherwise that that didn't cut out right no you're good yeah no it's it's been good i mean there's there's ups and downs like um i do enjoy the i mean the amount of services are hard but it is nice to really like like our church our parish does a um a weekly class and every year i just kind of look forward to that because we have like you know like soup like a soup supper and then we uh, we're reading through um, Elder Thaddeus's "Our Thoughts Determine Our Lives" now, so um, it's good. Yeah, it's. But then there's also like the weird, the weird days and the weird weeks where the demons are, you know, trying to to fight against us. But it's. Uh, yeah, Lent is always harder. It's always yeah. some always something happens in the first week, especially. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always yeah, something happens. I yeah, understand that's how so life it goes. We we fall and step by step we learn. Wow, so there's a step by step process with everything. So I've never actually also... I've never actually fasted through an entire Lent. Like I've tried, but I've never made it the whole way through and followed all the fasting rules at mm. like ever. I don't think I've ever been able to do no, I've never done it. Have any of you been successful or I I well, since I'm cradle Orthodox and my parents were converts, it like um they were very good at like um teaching me how to fast from since I was five. Like I started fasting when I was five, like like strict fasting. So like all the way. And um so I I I just grew up very used to it. And so I, it's not as much as a struggle for like eating for me. At least like, you know, I can stay on I I can uh not break the fast like eating wise uh pretty well but um yeah I, but like you know fasting from sin <laughs> yeah of course that's always you know very difficult but you know uh, like uh fasting from food I d noticed definitely helps with that but yeah it um yeah I'm trying to do more things like um uh, abstaining from like you know gaming or um tech more and i've been reading a lot more scripture like doing the scripture like daily scripture readings stuff yeah what about you Milesh? um so the food is, isn't a problem for me but like what like what you said the other stuff not to gossip not to maybe mm -hmm. say a bad word about someone or you know by accident or you know, or or maybe get overly angry or upset about something, mm -hmm. or be too focused on worldly things. That's that's like a big struggle, and that just reminded me of um, recently I saw a funny video. If uh, I think it was of uh, uh, Father Predrag uh, Popovic. He's a very famous priest in in Serbia. He has a big YouTube channel. I think eight hundred thousand or almost a million now. And he was like saying, oh, during the fasting period, I sometimes feel like an attritionist with all the things people ask me about food. <laughs> don't worry, as long as you don't eat your fellow humans and behave like a good person, it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that everything that comes out of our mouth, that's more important than what comes inside. Yeah, I, I think that's an actual like uh, quote from a saint. It's just... um. Where he says, like, what's the point of fasting if you're devouring your brothers with anger? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is a quote. That is a quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you find technology distracting at all during any time? Like, is it a distraction from your spiritual life? Because you use it so much, and obviously you have to use social media. You're going to see all the opinions of other people. And sometimes people just say things that is uh, well, dumb. And it triggers you and you want to respond do you find it a distraction at all personally yeah i think uh for me mainly it's like 
feeling the need to always have something on in the background, you know, like when I'm like cooking dinner or walking from my car to here, it's like, oh, I got to have like a podcast or some music on. So for me, that's kind of how like the distraction manifests. And sometimes it's like, well, no, it'd be better just to do the Jesus prayer or something, you know, like, uh, um, and then yeah, scrolling. I mean, like doom scrolling, that's, that's the other one mm. gets me sometimes it's just trying I to find the especially next. the podcast, uh, reference, uh, like today I was making glass noodles and I, I was like, oh, let's put something on because I was bored. You were so making glass like, noodles? I found like a random video about sharks or something like that. No, so we're going to have to go back to <laughs> that comment you made. Noodle. You're making glass noodles? Wait, was noodles? that glass noodle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're called in English, but it's like, uh, it's like, you know, noodles without eggs and stuff. And it's, oh, like, okay. it's called glass noodles. I don't know what they're called okay. in English. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's not real glass. <laughs> right on. I hope not. <laughs> That's some asceticism right there. It's just glass. <laughs> Hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think the, yeah, the um, um, unplugging during the fast, yeah, or like especially just like you know, especially with how surrounded we are by tech, right? Um, like you want to listen to something, you're always wanting some kind of stimulation nowadays. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, I, I definitely agree. It can be very hard the spiritual life. Um. But how do you uh, deal with like, uh, you know, with being, you know, uh, having an online presence, obviously, you're going to get hate comments and stuff like the classic God, not real <laughs> on mm. like, you know, religious videos that they get a lot. Like, how do you handle that? You just ignore them. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, I don't really read comments too much just because I found it can I find my passions are flared um, when I read a lot of like the public comments. I'll read like Patreon and and um, a lot of like YouTube member comments because those are usually like you know people that are um, quite kind and gracious. Um, but yeah, in other cases, it's sometimes it's kind of like a cool opportunity if someone says like, well, you know, if um, if it's like a video on Father Sarah from Rose and they say like, well, I just don't agree with his writings. It's like, well, okay. I mean, like just an opportunity, I think to at least try to, to pray for them. And, and, um, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's like, it's this, it's huge board and people express their thoughts. And sometimes just, I hope I can utilize it as an opportunity to, to pray for someone if they uh, do a hate comment or, um, a doubting comment because we all have those doubts too so oh yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah and uh like you said like with online obviously it, the twitter that's how i um sent the message to you with twitter especially it's always people giving their opinions and their opinions are often things that they wouldn't say normally anyways like if you meet someone on the street they're not going to talk like that it's just inflammatory the whole mm -hmm. time um the best way i find to deal with it personally is to turn that into a, like a joke and not make them laugh a bit, you know, don't take it so seriously. Um, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we've all got our own opinions. And if you can turn that into an opportunity to to talk to someone, great, that's perfect. I personally usually don't have the time to like go in this back to back because it just goes forever. And some people I notice just want to say the last thing and that's all they want. So yeah. if you just give them that from the start. They're pretty happy. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, technology is inflammatory at times. And I find with Lent, I like to take a break from technology because it makes me angry or makes me annoyed or whatever it is. And especially in Lent, I just be like, you know what, I'll, I'll do this after Lent. I'll come back for you, but after Lent. I won't forget this comment. <laughs> um, yeah, do you, um, I think the that's mainly the things that I wanted to bring up in this interview. Is there any topic that that maybe you want to highlight? Yeah, I think I find it interesting what you guys are doing because it's like 
I remember, I don't know who made the post, but it was something to the effect of trying to convey like how your guys' content is going for a specific audience. It's like the meme audience. And I love that because I think, I think, that be, um, that would be Mr. Demos, who's unfortunately not here today because he's quote unquote sick. But oh, he's sick. He's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him. He couldn't, he barely spoke. He couldn't speak. Oh, bummer. Yeah. He, he yeah. runs the main channel. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, I mean, like, even like, With my like help, podcasts and stuff. Come on. Continue. I see <laughs> <what>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I find it like Kyle is another YouTuber where it's like this very like specific niche of of um of media. So yeah, I guess like what what have what have you guys learned? What's been like the experience doing a a podcast? Like what has been the what's the hardest thing and then like what's the the joy, let's say. Well, well I think um, you go, Mary. I'll oh, go after you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, um, uh, we have uh, uh, the Orthodox Meme Squad has a server, and all of us are on like a Discord server with like almost ten thousand people now, and that's mainly where we get a lot of our, like people coming on and asking questions. And I definitely notice it's a lot of teenagers, like teenage boys especially, because you know they're attracted to memes and. And the funnies and stuff, but they're but we also are pulling them in with like, um, uh, you know, the chants that are on the channel, or like this, you know, Demos has been um posting psalms as well, and um memes that are kind of like more, you know, I guess spiritual, I guess <laughs> I don't know. Um, and uh, I noticed that's like it really draws a lot of younger men especially like I've met uh some fellas in real life uh, like out and about who have actually seen the channel and they'll ask me questions and um yeah like sometimes they can be a little wacky you know but uh so a lot of them are coming from like a genuine place because you know they're very desperate for spirit something spiritual something you know because of, of like how the modern world is now it's just like there's such a like lack of spirituality and like when they get a little taste of it it's like they, they can't they they just want more they're just like yearning for more <laughs> and i i remember this and uh, this actually reminds me of a quote from saint paisios where he said if the young people um got even a little taste of the holiness of god it would take a crane to pull them out of the church <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, what were you going to say uh carl i was going to say yeah no the the memes are like think of it like a fishing rod the memes is like the bait and then you reel them in yeah and and the this channel is more like the serious this is where the serious conversation happens but first you've got to get them into it right and because the attention span is so short um i, I know for my brother like he's six years younger than me i can't get into hold a, a two-minute conversation that you hook them in with the memes, you reel them in, and then you get them to stay for, for you know, the spirituality, something, some meaning to their life. And we all need that, especially in this day and age where it really feels sometimes like you're floating, like, with no foundation. It's a foundation that, that everyone, and especially young people who aren't, don't know where to find it, it's something that they need. The only issue that I find is that often, because you can make an icon now, like a hundred of them, just by copy pasting. The 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 balance is like you mentioned earlier in our um, in the interview is where where are you being irreverential to that holy image or that that song or that psalm? And I would love to say I know exactly where to draw the line but sometimes it is hard to tell and sometimes you make a mistake and i think when you make a mistake the best thing that you can do is just to be like honestly sorry uh, i agree on second thought i probably shouldn't have done that and then just carry on and, and keep trying don't just be like i made a mistake that's it i'm going to give up now do you find that um 
being on a team makes it easier for you, um, Sophrony, to know when you're about to do something or say something that is maybe disrespecting that holy item. Yeah, it is good to have other individuals to bounce the ideas off of. I would say that I usually go to my priest personally, just because I really trust his discernment. Um, so that's, I think, been most helpful in that area. Um, having someone that's like been in the church and also someone that has perspective that is not in my generation. Um, so that I would say is, is usually the, the most help. Yeah. But definitely like it, it's, it's interesting because it's on one hand, I feel like it's such a new thing that we're in like the orthodox online sphere but i think also in many ways it's it's not new in the sense that like the passions are the same but they're just manifesting in different ways um so like you can be irreverent with like an icon an image of an icon but before you could also be irreverent with like the actual icon itself so um that could, that's kind of good to know that it's like nothing new under the sun really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, um, um I had uh, like a bit of a longer question. <clears throat> um, oh yeah, um, before I forgot to say, uh, yeah, for me the podcast was like so when I I created it with the other guys, and I asked them all to be on board. It was like my biggest show wasn't that to learn even more and especially with the clergy that we had on to learn more and to connect with a lot of people and spread the faith as good as possible and also seeing like uh, non-clergy guests how they carry themselves in the faith and how motivated they are and um, you know maybe copy some of the positive thoughts that they just have in life with the faith then with uh, fear about the podcast, it's always the fear is always there to say something wrong, something inaccurate, or or maybe influence someone in a bad way mm. and make them, you know, not come to the faith or stray away from the faith. You know, there is like this fear of God that if we do something wrong online, it could affect multiple people. I think everybody has it a bit. Who is like doing anything online? And my question was, because you mentioned uh, earlier how uh, during the making of the Death of the World video, how, how you were thinking, maybe this should be hard. So I was like thinking, in what other uh, sense did the Orthodox Church and the faith uh, influence you? How you approach now doing things with the Orthodox mindset compared to the past, what other things did you like? uh from new to your mindset basically yeah i think before my motivations were there was no context to look at my motivations on a deeper level like i always mm -hmm. would like think like well, I shouldn't be like greedy, but like, how, what does that actually look like? Right. And so when I look back, I was like, well, my motivations back then were literally just to create content to like, uh, when I say back then before harmony was like a gap of my life where it was just making content to make money, to create more content, to make money. And it's just like this loop. And so now it's like, I still see that within myself, but give the orthodox faith has given me kind of like the the tool set to try to take a step back and realize like when i'm leaning back into that when i'm faltering and, mm -hmm. and actually like how to approach that um so yeah i would say it's like the underlying motivation for getting up in every day and, and doing a, a task is yeah yeah well honestly yeah, i totally often... get that with you go, with the faith, you know, you get like multiple different angles, then how, how you can see and approach situations. 
And just for the last question, because I was very curious about that, what was your favorite video to work on that you guys did so far? That's a good question. I think St. Yakovos, like he, <laughs> I don't know, there's something, I mean, you know, we all have like connections to saints, but I just, I really got to know him making that video. Um, and yeah, telling his story and I, the, the Greek culture, I'd love to visit Greece one day and, and just trying to capture that as best as I could, I think was, well, was a lot of joy. I don't like to rub it in, but I just came back. So, um, oh, nice. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's a nice country. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's awesome. Was, yeah. Um, like, I, I totally get that. Just like, you know, when you find a saint that you just really connect with and you're just like, man, like, um, um, I've been reading a lot more female saints because of I, as a woman, re, uh, automatically already relate to women a lot more, and um, and I just I just kept finding women who are just incredible, you know, like Saint Catherine, who was you know, martyred with like you know the wheel, and um, Saint Tamar of Georgia. You know, just finding incredible women, just and um, yeah, just finding those saints that you just enjoy and like love talking about them and spreading their stories. Just always, just like yes. <laughs> yeah, there's this image I've been seeing on Twitter circulating. It's like it has like all like the Wojaks or like the different cast of characters we've come to know through these memes, but then they're like. Mm -hmm. Next to them is like the image of the saint. It's like, oh, he's literally me, or oh, she's literally me. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I I, I know yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <It's> <laughs> uh, well, what were you my, saying, Kyle? I was I was just trying to wrap it up. I'm, I'm I was saying basically I've I've asked all the questions. I think we've got um answers to everything. I just have and... one last one. Sure. Because I was curious, what's so what's the next uh video project that's gonna be on the youtube show yeah i'm uh i'm really excited about we basically do like premium videos every week and then trying to slowly increase uh to free videos every week as well but on the premium side we're working on uh, we do this series called dust to dust and it's um sayings of the desert fathers but kind of like audio dramatized and um, with some visuals, but I'm recently switching over to continuing that series, but actually working with like an artist to do kind of like anime style frames and kind of trying to venture more into um, kind of like the more anime style, like actual animation. So that one's really exciting, I think for me. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's very nice. Have you ever thought about making, you know, because you have a like a group and so uh, and like, they all all have a priest and maybe like get all together make like a complete sh uh, animated show maybe about some faith related topic or is this yeah. or is it already in the works nice yeah no uh lord willing we'll be able to to do it in the in the next couple of years it's i think there's yeah like i said there's the the amount of resources that are available to creatives specifically like that make it accessible i think is just trying to it's hard it's just like you want to just do it all but you know it's uh i get that yeah, it's a lot of fun it's yeah. top secret information we lost shouldn't have asked him he's gonna reveal it <laughs> <laughs> um but otherwise i think that's everything that we wanted to ask you and remember to talk about the iconographer thing yeah i'm gonna put the links down in the description below to our regular watchers, thank you. Sorry for the break, but we're back now. And uh, I know that Sofrani is looking for an iconographer. So if any of you are good iconographer, iconographers, and I've seen plenty of your drawings, so I know some of you are, apply. I'll put the link down below. Check out his channel, like, comment, subscribe. And um, as usual, this is the Orthodox Squad signing up here with Harmony, and we'll see you next time. Ven sono la